This is the OTB Network. Welcome to this week's edition of Horses and Courses. I'm Jean Wood. This program is brought to you by Parting Glass Racing. We've just wrapped up another weekend's worth of stakes racing. We'll start things out now at Monmouth Park with a pair of stakes from the weekend going back first to Saturday afternoon and the running of the Revideer for fillies and mares. in the Revideer. Not a good start for Becky's Exchange. Giant Mover and Trenza had good beginnings. First Ascent is out with some speed on the inside. Then it's Choice Play on the far outside. At the rail, Eye of Taurus. Then Unbridled Essence. Becky's Exchange off a beat slowly. Is second last and a little headstrong early on. The trailer is talking about love and the leader is Giant Mover and she's going to go on early. Giant Mover and Chris DiCarlo opening up a five length advantage in the race to the first turn. And they are clear from first ascent to run second by a length and a half. Then Trensa surrounded by Eye of Taurus and Unbridled Essence. Two lengths back to Becky's Exchange yet to settle down. She's seven lengths off the lead. And then to the outside comes Choice Play. And talking about love is the trailer as they move down the back stretch. Giant Mover leads the way by two and a half lengths. And is clear from first ascent to second by a length. Trent says third. Then it's Eye of Taurus. Unbridled Essence on the far outside. Two and a half to Becky's Exchange and Choice Play. And last of all is talking about love. They make their way into the far turn. And Giant Mover now with a three length lead. Giant Mover the one to catch. And then it's Eye of Taurus on the inside, second. First Ascent backs out of it, third on Bridal Essence is fourth. Then Trenza to the inside. Choice Play is going to come wide, has them run. At the top of the stretch, it's Giant Mover. Eye of Taurus has the main chance, and they're well clear of the others. Giant Mover, Eye of Taurus. Eye of Taurus coming up, and after Giant Mover, Eye of Taurus takes the lead, and Giant Mover is back into second as Eye of Taurus takes the Revideer. Giant Mover was second, talking about love third, then choice play. Eye of the Taurus picking up the victory by a length from off the pace. Very sharp effort by this horse. Pretty much all of the fillies, in fact, the top five, all coming out of the matchmaker stakes on the 1st of August. Eye of the, T Eye of the Taurus was seventh that day to Unbridled Essence, who managed to finish fifth, then last of the horses coming out of that race, strangely enough, in the, uh, in the return race here on Saturday. A little bit differently, uh, differently run race, obviously, and we did have a 16th less to work with as Eye of the Taurus scores by a length. It was Giant Mover in second, a long way back to talking about love in the third spot. Eye of the Taurus is a Bay Philly, a daughter of Aldebaran from Ocean Shore by Silverhawk, bred in Kentucky by T. Wayne Sweezy and Patrick Lolly Wakelin. Owned by Harvey A. Clark and trained by Karen McLaughlin, ridden to victory by Eddie Castro, Eye of Taurus covers the mile in the 16th in 140.23. Next up, we'll head into the Sunday card at Monmouth Park, and unfortunately, the weather did not continue to cooperate into the weekend. We did have a sealed sloppy racetrack for the running on Sunday of the formal gold. They're racing in the formal gold. Chirac came out very well. Etched on the inside goes with Chirac early and these two sprint clear from Sir Whimsy who settles into stride in third, well clear of long shot secret getaway who's backed off seven lengths from leader Chirac. And Chirac is in front to the clubhouse turn, clear by two and a half lengths now over Etched and Sir Whimsy who are right next to each other second and third. It's now five and a half lengths back to secret getaway who's unhurried early on. 24 and one was the first quarter. They've got six furlongs to go, and Chirac and Elvis Trujillo lead them by a length and a half. Alan Garcia guiding etched off the rail to sit second, and outside of them is Sir Whimsy, who's kept close to the pace by Paco Lopez, only two lengths behind, and it's four to secret getaway. Down the back stretch, Chirac continues to lead the way. Ran a half in 48 and two-fifth seconds, even fraction so far. 
Etched is running in second. Now an early move from Secret Getaway, who's come through on the inside of Sir Whimsy to close the gap to two lengths. But Secret Getaway's under a drive back there in third. Chirac the leader, a half length on top. Etched on the outside second. Now Sir Whimsy takes third once again from Secret Getaway, who made a middle move up the backstretch, but has flattened out as they make their way toward the top of the stretch. Etched is drawn even up front with Chirac. Sir Whimsy will come into the stretch wide, two lengths behind them. Three quarters, one, 12 and four, they're into the stretch. Etched on the outside, Chirac along the rail. Nose to nose at the eighth pole. Chirac and Etched and Sir Whimsy trying to close in. It's etched in front. Chirac keeps battling on the inside. Just these two, etched and Chirac, and etched wins the formal gold. Chirac was second, Sir Whimsy was third, and then secret getaway. Etched perhaps benefiting from that wet racetrack. First off the long layoff, hadn't seen action since last year's Clark Handicap when he was 13th behind Blame and misremembered that day. Showed his usual good early foot, obviously handling a wet racetrack as he generally does and scoring by a length over another returning horse, Chirac, who had not seen action since the 2009 running of the Island right here on August 27th last year. He settles for the second spot, it was five plus lengths back to Sir Whimsy in third. The winner etched is the six-year-old chestnut son of forestry from Unbridled Elaine by Unbridled Song. Bred in Kentucky by Darley and owned by the breeder, trained by Karen McLaughlin, ridden to victory by Alan Garcia. Etched covers the mile in a 16th on the sealed sloppy muddy or a sealed sloppy surface at Mammoth in 145.03. We'll head to Presque Isle Downs now for a pair of weekend stakes racing going back to Friday evening at uh, Presque Isle. It was older horses going a mile in the Presque Isle mile. There in the gate. They're off in the Presque Isle Mile. Good start for Mambo Meister, Cherokee Artist, Gallego SP between horses down along the rail. Black Belt and Successful Dan. Into the first turn they go. Black Belt's going to show the way over Successful Dan along in second. Gallego is three wide third. Then out on the middle of the track, it's Stunning Stag. Mambo Meister between horses. Down along the rail, I Know Why. Then Alley's event, Cherokee Artist, and the trailer is Rockin' Rockstar. The first quarter was 23-1. and one. Up the back stretch they go. Black Belt's going to show the way. Successful Dan, right along in second. A gap of two. Gallego is next. Then Mambo Meister down along the rail. Stunning Stag right along beside that one. Alley's events between horses. Down along the inside, I Know Why. And Cherokee Artist, well bunched in a gap of about 10 or 12 links to Rockin' Rockstar star the trailer up the back stretch to the half the half was 46 flat they're flying out there as black belt shows the way successful dan still along in second guy ego gets shook up a little bit in third and on the outside that stunning stag now in fourth down on the inside mambo meister cherokee artist now starts to get closer than alley's event and two more back to i know why at the top of the stretch now successful dan's gonna take over from black belt those two right together on the outside now guy ego Stunning Stag is now four wide. They straighten out and head for home. Gallego and successful Dan. These two right side by side. Stunning Stag out in the middle of the track. Now Gallego takes over the lead from successful Dan. Gallego gets clear. Successful Dan in second. Gallego still there. Gallego wins the Presque Isle Mile. Successful Dan gets second. Stunning Stag third. Gallego stretching out with success here by two lengths. This is a horse that generally has a very strong closing kick while sprinting. Kind of a big free running type, likes to be able to get in the clear and uh, here returns to the, uh, to the root game and scores by a length over successful Dan. Probably a horse to keep your eye on. This horse was second off the long layoff is winless this year, but is a horse who ran very well against good three-year-olds last year while running three for three at the age of three. Running stag, I'm sorry, stunning stag completes the order of the top three. Gallego, fourth last time out in the Vanderbilt on a speed favoring track here at Saratoga behind Majestic Perfection. The pace set it up for him to be a little bit closer here so he didn't have to make that dramatic off the pace move, but Alan Garcia, who continues to ride very well, guided him to the right part of the track. Gallego, 
A dark bay or brown son of gilded time from Devil's Lake by Lost Code was bred in Kentucky by Hargis and Sandra Sexton, owned by Godolphin Racing, trained by Saeed Ben Soror with Rick Matee, managing the operation in New York. Under Alan Garcia, Gallego covers the mile in 134.90. One of the highlight races of the Presque Isle meeting is the Presque Isle Masters for older fillies and mares at six and a half furlongs. They're off in the Masters Stakes. Good start for Old Time Religion and Denali Glitter. Dr. Zick now takes the lead between horses. That's Sweet Lorena. Dr. Zick on the front end down along the rail. Old Time Religion in between horses. That's whack em all. Peristaltica moves up. Then Mother Rush on the outside. Denali Glitter. Sweet Lorena is next. Don't talk to me. Then between horses. That's Red Hot Buddha down along the rail, Dubai. Majesty and the trailer is in form decision. To the far turn they go. The first quarter was 22 flat. The leader on the outside is Dr. Zick. On the inside, whack em all. Old time religion along in third. Then Mother Russia is next on the far outside. That's Don't Talk to Me. Peristaltica's there. Then Sweet Lorena. Red Hot Buddha moving up. Dubai Majesty. And from the far back in form, Decision starts her run. At the top of the stretch, though, it's whack em all. Dr. Zick, Old Time Religion. And on the far outside, Don't Talk to Me. They straighten out for the drive home, though. Whack em all. Opens up by a link. Dr. Zick still there. Here comes Sweet Lorena flying between horses, old time religion down along the rail and on the far outside, Dubai Majesty and on the far outside, informed decision. It's whack em all, Dubai Majesty, informed decision, Dubai Majesty, informed decision wins it. Look like a nose between informed decision and Dubai Majesty. Informed decision back in the winner's circle, now three for three right here at Presque Isle off a sixth place finish again on that speed favoring track at Saratoga. I think it's fair to say perhaps informed decision is not quite as sharp as she once was, but here after having a little bit of a troubled trip, she still ends up getting the victory by a head over Dubai Majesty, who is always a determined sprinting filly. Presque Isle uh, favorite Sweet Lorena, who has always run very well here. In fact, I think hit the board in this race behind informed decision last year. Was nearly 30 to 1 and gaining late to finish third. Informed decision is a gray or roan daughter of Monarchos from Kalangala by His Majesty. Bred in Kentucky by C. Kidder and N. Cole, owned by the Augustan Stable and trained by Jonathan Shepard, ridden to victory by Julian Leperu. Informed decision covers the six and a half in 115.62. We will continue now with sprinting fillies, this time at Delaware Park, where we will uh, head down, take a look at Saturday's running of the Endine. A bit there in the gate. All giving, trying to settle that one down. And they're off in the Endine, and the two Ivory Empress got away awkwardly there at the start. Secret Gypsy breaks well from the inside, goes right for that lead. Right there, it's all giving the challenge, and now all giving to the front by length. Secret Gypsy. Doesn't really want that lead, it appears. Rattle moves back on the inside. Life Lesson moves up on the outside. Secret Gypsy now back in the third. Lengthen it further back to Mindy Sue. Our Christie to the inside, followed by Hourglass, and the trailer is Ivory Empress. Opening quarter, a moderate 22 and 2 for this group as they make their way into the turn. All giving leads it by length over Life Lesson. Secret Gypsy racing in third. Up on the outside, Mindy Sue, followed by our Christy. It's a length and a half further back to Hourglass. Toward the inside, Ivory Empress trying to join the fray. With three eights to go, it's all given on the front end, still going strong. By length over Life Lesson, Secret Gypsy down toward the inside. We'll need some racing room. Jamie Thario looking for room. Finds none right now as they head for home. All on the front end, it's all giving. Now, a hole opens for Secret Gypsy, and she spurts right on through. Being followed by Ivory Empress and Hourglass splitting horses. Mindy Sue on the outside. Secret Gypsy gets the jump on the outside Mindy Sue toward the inside Ivory Empress running a huge one after that break but Secret Gypsy she's never been better she wins it by two over Ivory Empress followed by Mindy Sue and our Christie. Secret Gypsy in off of a win at Saratoga where she was victorious in the Honorable Miss most recently that performance coming over Hourglass, who uh, she faced here once again, putting that uh, that filly away as well. 
Secret Gypsy prior to that had picked up a win out at, uh, in the Sailorville at Prairie Meadows. So obviously a horse that does not mind uh, shipping. She does not need to take her track with her and uh, has now won three in a row. Running her record to eight for 17 lifetime as she scores by a length over the late moving Ivory Empress with Mindy Sue back in third. Secret Gypsy is a five-year-old chestnut mare, a daughter of Sea of Secrets from Miss Utada by Rahi. Bred in Kentucky by Norman Cheng, owned by Richland Hill Stable and John Kuehl. Trained by Ron Werner and ridden to victory by Jamie Terrio. Secret Gypsy covers the six and one ten point two three. We'll pause now for a brief message when we return. We've got more great stakes action. Please stay with us. Welcome back to Horses and Courses. We will continue now at Arlington Park with a pair of two-year-old races on Saturday afternoon. Kicking things off, grade three, two-year-old Colts and Geldings in the $100,000 Arlington, Washington Futurity. They're in the gate. They're off in the Arlington, Washington Futurity. Their impersonator on the front outside going out toward the front with Ghetto Cat. Weekend Wildcat is right there as they come toward this main track. And here's Big Blue Caboose. So Big Blue Caboose in front of Ghetto Cat. And Weekend Wildcat is close up in third onto this main track. Rough sailing, major game between horses. Caleb's Posse right there in the middle of it all. Then we come back to Impersonator, who's running second to last after a good start. And Weemaway trails. The opening quarter in 22 and 4. Five furlongs to go. Big Big Caboose in front. Big Blue Caboose leads by three quarters of length to Ghetto Cat close in tow. Weekend Wildcat is well up in third. Caleb's Posse well spotted fourth. Rough selling of the Blue Cap toward the rail. Then Major Gain, Impersonator, and Weemaway at the back. The half mile on the straightaway, 46 seconds flat. Big Blue Caboose, three furlongs from home in the Arlington, Washington Futurity. Between horses, Ghetto Cat, Weekend Wildcat, these three as they come toward the quarter pole. Quincy Hamilton and Caleb's Posse right there on the far outside Impersonator. Major Gain, Rough Sailing's in a box. Rough Sailing is in behind a wall. Weemaway has trailed into the stretch. Ghetto Cat, here comes Caleb's Posse. Rough Sailing dives toward the rail as Major Gain comes to tackle. Impersonator on the outside, inside the final half furlong. Here's Major Gain up to the front for Junior Alvarado and Wayne Catalano. Major Gain in the Arlington, Washington future. Jordy, second close, Caleb's Posse and Rough Sailing, and then Impersonator and Ghetto Cat, major gain in 136 and 1. Major gain is a maiden no more. In fact, now a stakes winner indeed. Off of a second place finish in his career debut last time out to Caleb's Posse, on whom he turned the tables here. Major gain rallies to win by a nose over rough sailing with Caleb's Posse back in the third spot. The winner, Major Gain, a dark bay or brown son of more than ready from Dream Lady by Old Trieste, was bred in Kentucky by Gary and Mary West, owned by the breeders, trained by Wayne Catalano, and ridden a victory by Junior Alvarado. 
Major gain covers the mile on the Arlington synthetic surface in 136.36. Next up, it's two-year-old fillies in the grade three Arlington Washington Lassie. And they're off in the Arlington Washington Lassie. Song of the City, reluctant to load, going out toward the front along with LaRue Lovelake on the far outside. Here's Tell Me All About It, who comes up the near side. Third chance in the orange is close along with Edie, even Honey Child onto this main track. Song of the City in front. Song of the City leads Tell Me All About It. Third chance, Edie. Honey Child right there. One star up the fence. LaRue Lovelake is next. Jordy Wise settled in toward the midfield. Then comes Wonderland by Night Miss Inclined. At the inside, Summer Savory, then Crepe Myrtle running in 12th. And Image of Graces last of the 13. The opening quarter robust, 22 seconds flat. It's Song of the City setting a fast pace with a half mile to go. Tell Me All About It is just held. Up. Here comes Edie, third chance right there on the outside. Into the far turn, LaRue Lovelake is fifth. One star sixth between Phillies and Honey Childs on the far outside. The half mile went in 45 seconds flat under three for longs to go. Third chance head to head with Edie. LaRue Lovelake right there third. One star between horses. Song of the City gives way. Honey Child in the purple cap on the outside. Jordy Y is five wide. Wonderland by night six wide. Summer Savory Justin back in the front. Then Great Myrtle into the stretch. Third chance led in the final for long. Third chance Wonderland by night and tight was Jordy Y for a moment. Moment. Honey Child in there pitching away. Miss Inclined on the far outside. Coming up toward the wire. E.T. Baird and Wonderland by night. Wonderland by night has won it from Jordy Y and third chance. And then Honey Child finished fourth in front of Miss Inclined. Wonderland by night runs her record to four for four off a win in the Ontario debutante last time out. At Woodbine, she rallies very strongly in a professional fashion to win going away two and a half lengths, the better of Jordy Y with third chance back in the third spot. Through an interesting uh, twist of fate, this filly is actually four for four, having won two maiden races. She finished second in her career debut and uh, came back in a maiden, which she won. Following that performance, the winner of the first race had her win taken from her on a technicality. And uh, as a result, Wonderland by Night is a two-time maiden winner, also a stakes winner now at uh, both Woodbine and Arlington Park. Wonderland by Night is a chestnut daughter of Sky Mesa from One Miracle at a Time by Gulch. Bred in Illinois by Michael Rivas and owned by Mark Domenico Limited. Trained by Michael Rivas and ridden to victory by E.T. Baird. Wonderland by Night covers the mile in 136.65. We will head to Kentucky now for a couple of interesting races on the Kentucky Downs turf course. Again, this is kind of a strange shaped turf course. They finish on an uphill fairly European in style is Kentucky Downs and they had a big day on Saturday their opening day for their short fall meet beginning the stakes program was the Kentucky Cup ladies turf she's going in they're all set for the Kentucky Cup ladies turf they're off Goldilocks had a length slow start Orchestrator came out fast right in the center. Let's Dream Again is showing speed, and so is Midway Holiday. They're bunched up. My baby, baby, Parasaitis. There goes Direct Line, and Direct Line racing up on the far outside. Direct, direct Line now shooting to the lead. Sweet Teresa also flashing speed. She gets out now to be in that pack in second. Then it's back to Excelente. Never retreat, and right there between horses now, Midway Holiday is dropped back, then Goldilocks. Further back in the field are Saniga, Ladies Laughter, and Deputy Darling is last of the 13 now as they run down that dip into the far turn and direct line has made the lead it's direct line on top now in front by two my baby baby gets a good spot now chasing in second Parasaitis is saving ground right there is sweet Teresa and now going up on the outside that is Seniga Seniga's going up now to take third 
Orchestrator is mid-pack. Let's dream again on the outside. It's got seven to make up. Then Goldilocks, never retreat. Ladies, laughter. Towards the back of the pack, Midway Holiday. Excelente has got a dozen lengths to make up. And five back to Deputy Darling. They're racing now towards the top of the stretch. Got three furlongs still to go. The leader is direct line, leading it now, waiting for competition there. Tony Farina looking around. My Baby Baby is second. Parasaidas right there on the inside, in position. So Saniga. Ladies, laughter now shifting wide for the stretch drive as they come for the final quarter of a mile. And now direct line is asked to go, but look at Parasaidas on the inside. My Baby Baby and Saniga. Here they come for crunch time. Parasaidas on the inside is driving. Saniga. Never Retreat is also on the scene. And Never Retreat is closing gamely. On the far outside, look at Never Retreat coming to Saniga. It's Saniga and Never Retreat. Saniga on the inside in the red cap. Never Retreat right up there, shoulder to shoulder. And Never Retreat on the outside gets up to win the Kentucky Cup Ladies Turf. Saniga was second. Ladies Laughter was third. And Parasaidas finished fourth. Never retreat in from a win last time out at Canterbury, where she won the Lady Canterbury, now six for 20 lifetime. Scores strongly from off the pace. Obviously, that, down, that uphill at the end of this race did not bother her at all. She scores by a half over Seniga, and it was a long way back to Lady's Laughter in third. The winner, Never Retreat, is a dark bay or brown mare, a daughter of Smart Strike from Lisieux by Smart Growth. Bred in Kentucky by Jerry O'Meara and Stanley Inman. Inman. Owned by Team Block and trained by Chris Block, ridden to victory by Eduardo Perez. Never Retreat covers the mile at Kentucky Downs in 146.18. We'll head right back to Kentucky Downs. Next up, it's the Kentucky Cup Turf Dash. He's going up. They're all set. They're off in the Kentucky Cup Turf Dash. A good start. Due date came out fast on the inside, but there goes ZI Zip flying and ZI Zip shooting clear now to lead. Shore Do going after him now in second. Classical closing from the far outside is now a joint third. Then Yankee Ingenuity. St. Joe in the bright pink is about eight lengths off the lead. It's got two beat. Amazing results to his outside and a big gap of about seven or eight back to Whitley. Now there's a half mile to go, and ZI Zip is pedaled to the metal, leading it fast in front by about four. Shore Do now cuts into that lead a bit. On the inside, Due Date the Gray is well placed. And Yankee Ingenuity, a patient fourth, but begins to gain ground now gradually as they run up for the top of the stretch. Then it's Classical Closing. St. Joe back towards the rear, but on the inside. And racing second last, that is amazing results. Still got about seven lengths to make up, and Whitley is no factor. Now they straighten away for the final quarter of a mile, and Shore Do makes a bid. Here comes Due Date, though. He shifts out now. And Due Date the Gray is coming on after Shore Do. ZI Zip, a late bid from Classical Closing, and amazing results. Then Yankee Ingenuity. Here they come for the final furlong. It is due date. Amazing results in classical closing on the outside. It is still due date. Due date's on top. Amazing results is trying hard. Due date is desperate, but he'll get there. And due date wins the turf dash by over a length. Amazing results ran second, and it's tight for third between ZI Zip and classical closing. Due date and Tony Farina scoring the victory by a length, fairly close to the pace every step of the way. It was a late charging, amazing result, making up a lot of ground late. Classical closing completes the top three, getting his nose down on the wire in front of ZI Zip. Due date, who was uh, second off of a long layoff back si since February, uh, won an allowance race last time at Ellis Park over several horses that were obviously also prepping for this spot. He did look like he might be the class of the field, having taken on some of the likes of some pretty strong sprinters, including Chamberlain Bridge and Aquino Cat on the turf, as well as Custom for Carlos on the dirt. Due date is a gray son of El Prado from Hidden Assets by Mount Livermore. Bred in Kentucky by Bert Elaine and Richard Klein, owned by the Breeders and trained by Steve Margolis, ridden to victory by Tony Farina, due date covers the six furlongs and 116.41. Next up, older horses going long in Kentucky Downs only graded stake, the grade three Kentucky Cup turf. Good set for the 14th Kentucky Cup turf. They're off. A clean, even start for the marathon journey, and Celtic New Year is racing out towards the front. On the inside, Free Fighter is patient, is taking back. Here comes Negra de Gaita towards the outside, and Imponente Purse getting up second and third. 
Razif is taken back in mid-pack here, but not too far back. And then it's Class Bopper, Cool Cullen Times. There's Cloudy's Night, second last, about eight lengths off the lead. And Guadalcanal can see them all the first time around as they continue on their long journey. Imponente Purse now going out to take a slight lead. He's got his ears up, twitching around, just taking it in. They are certainly not going any kind of an aggressive pace for this kind of a journey. And to the inside, Celtic New Year back now to show some more speed. These two share the lead now as they take this first turn. From the outside, Negro da Gaita getting up to be in third, and the very patient free fighter is tucked in fourth. Now the whole field is stacking up. They must have slowed down the fractions right there because they're all bottled up now. Here comes Cool Cullen Times in mid-pack. Razif is on the outside. There's Cloudy's Knight. Suddenly, look at Cloudy's Knight on the inside by virtue of a slow pace and saving ground. He's all the way up now to be a joint second, and right there in the mix on the inside under Rosemary Homeister. And further back in the pack, Guadalcanal still trails, but now only about seven off the lead. And as we said, they bunched up quite a bit there in that middle section. Now they ascend the back stretch and they head towards the dip there and Claudia's Knight up on the inside, as we said, right in the race now. The leader though is still Imponente Purse. Then Celtic New Year, Cool Cullen Times on the outside. Then it's Free Fighter, Class Bopper, Razif towards the back, still got some work to do, but two horses beat. Then Negra da Gaita and Guadalcanal. Now they're racing for the final turn, and Claudius Knight is down inside, got three horses to his outside. Cool Cullen Times continues gradual progress, and there's Celtic New Year still in the race. Those two now go back in front. Racing fourth is Imponente Purse, then it's Razif. Free Fighter begins to gain gradually. A half mile left to go, he's within five lengths of the lead. It is two back to Class Bopper, further back to Guadalcanal, and a defeated Negra da Gaita. They're racing now for the final three-eighths of a mile. Celtic New Year, Cool Cullen Times, Claudius Knight now on the inside, Waiting to do his best running, but he's right there, though, in striking range. Razif's got the white cap, so a number of chances here as they get towards the straightaway, and Free Fighter now splits horses. Here's a move from Free Fighter, one from the inside. That's going to make Cloudy's Knight go. So here we go. Cloudy's Knight on the inside now bears down. Free Fighter made his bid, and these two are now kicking on from the field. Razif has got a shot, though, in third, and here they come in crunch time here for the Kentucky Cup turf. And look at Razif. Razif has come shooting up on the outside. And Razif went right by Cloudy's Knight, and he gets his revenge today. Razif, second a year ago, but first this year. And how Razif, a strong win in the Kentucky Cup turf. Cloudy's Knight was second best. Free Fighter ran third, and Celtic New Year was fourth. Rezif picks up the victory over last year's winner, Cloudy's Knight, who was off since last December and returning now at the age of 10 off of the long layoff. He did himself, uh, did himself proud running a big race, but getting caught as Rezif had much more left in the tank to climb that hill late, scoring by six and a quarter lengths. Free Fighter completes the order of the top three. The winner, Razif, last time out had no kick into a slow allowance pace at Ellis Park with several of these horses, again, in one of those Ellis races that appeared to have been carded as a bit of a prep for Kentucky Cup Day at Kentucky Downs, but uh, obviously had a little bit better uh, situation here and had enough left to handle that uphill late. Razif is a Bay Gelding, a son of distant view from formal affair by Dyna Former, bred in Kentucky by Don Edward Pfizer, owned by Don Donald Sexton, Matthew Jacobson, and Thomas Bauman. Trained by Matthew Jacobson and ridden to victory by Greta Kunzweiler, Razif covers the mile and a half in 244.74. We'll continue with route racing, extended routes. We'll head to Turfway Park, the Turfway Park Fall Championship at one and a half miles on their synthetic course. And they're off. Eldoffer broke sharply, but as expected, Calvin Burrell sends Smart and Destiny right through to the lead. Slagovitz up on the outside, moves up and takes second. Eldoffer third ahead. Falling Knife is fourth. Then it's a length to pick six in fifth. From the outside, Odds On runs sixth, followed by Linyan's Hero. As they move for the stretch for the first time, the first quarter went in 25 seconds flat. And it's Smart and Destiny with that lead. Has it by an easy length. Formula for success is second. Pick six down along the inside, third ahead, Alda for fourth. From the inside in fifth, that's Falling Knife. Then up between horses into six, Slagovitz, followed by Odds On, the trailers are Linyan's Hero and Atoned. 
Picked up a bit, the half and 49 and four. It's Smart and Destiny and Calvin Burrell in front. Now just by a head, Formula for Success. Moves up to challenge and formula for success. Moves right by, gets the lead from Smart and Destiny. Sligovitz takes third. Eldoffer right there in fourth. Through from the inside, pick six is fifth. Then down along the inside, Linion's hero. Moving up from between horses, Atoned is gaining. Then falling knife and odds on. As they move for the turn, the leader is Formula for Success. Now just by a head, but here comes Smart and Destiny back for more. Then up from the outside, El Doffer and Sligovitz, and it's well bunched field as they move for the stretch. Down along the inside, Formula for Success. Smart and Destiny. Now El Doffer. El Doffer moves, puts ahead in front. Sligovitz is on the outside. Atoned is gaining from between horses. Here comes Atoned looking for a seam. El Doffer gets the lead. Atoned through on the inside. On the outside, Sligovitz is now third. Then from between horses, Falling Knife is gaining. It's El Doffer, though, with the lead. With Atoned and Falling Knife. El Doffer in front. Atoned, Falling Knife, and El Doffer is going to the Breeders' Cup. Wins it by a half under a good ride by John Court. Photo for second, falling knife down along the inside, atoned. El Doffer, a horse of it knocking around against some pretty nice horses, gets himself back into the picture as far as the Breeders' Cup Marathon is concerned with this victory by a half a length over Falling Knife, who was making his extended route debut and obviously handling it well, a son of Cozine, one would figure would go on well going long, atoned rounds out the top three after a little bit of a tricky beginning, he finishes up strongly to finish third. The winner, El Doffer, is a dark bay or brown gelded son of A.P. Indy from Habibti by Tabasco Cat. Bred in Kentucky by Shadwell Farm, owned by the Algu Weiria Stable and trained by Diane Alvarado, winning to victory by John Court, El Doffer covers the mile and a half in 232.55. We'll pause now for one more brief message. When we return, it's more Great Stakes Racing. Please stay with us. Welcome back to Horses and Courses. We will continue now in Canada at Woodbine, where Sunday's stakes feature was for two-year-olds going seven furlongs in the Swinford. They're at the post. They're off in the Swinford stakes. Something extra for the outside and devilish stunt toward the rail. And devilish stunt comes on to take a short lead as they prepare to come onto the main track. And Sutherland has moved Devilish Stunt well off the rail. Quite a handful out there. Devilish Stunt very anxious on the front end. Sutherland having a difficult time rating this one in between horses. Something extra. Bears Futures three wide and a length off the lead. 
Then back to whip it and a trailing is long shot. Good to see you. 23 seconds for the opening quarter mile. And Devilish Stunt has uh, settled down just a bit now. Devilish Stunt leads it by three quarters of a length. Something extra is a second. Bears Futures tracking the speed from third. Back and forth is whip it. Way back there is good to see you. 45 and two for the opening half mile. And springing into action now is Bears Future. And here comes Bears Future three wide as they come to the top of the stretch with those long strides that we noticed in his debut. And it's Bears Future and to the inside something extra. And those two lock horns as they come to the last 16th of a mile. Bears Future on the outside to the inside to determine something extra. But something extra will be second best to Bears Future who's two for two lifetime and a winner of the Swinford. Something extra was second, whip it third, and devilish stunt fourth. Bears Future picks up the victory in nice fashion, drawing away by three and a half lengths over something extra with Whippet back in the third spot. Very nice effort for this Colt who is now two for two, having won his maiden special weight on debut last time out in fairly nice fashion right here at Woodbine on the 13th of August. Bears Future is a two-year-old two son of Rockport Harbor from Prairie Pie by Belong to Me, bred in Kentucky by Kidder Cole Griggs et al. and owned by the Bear Stable. Trained by Reed Baker and ridden to victory by Jerry Elgwin. He represents the first stakes winner from his freshman, freshman sire, Rockport Harbor's first crop. Congratulations to the, uh, the connections there and obviously Rockport Harbor getting off as he was a good two-year-old to a very nice start himself as a sire of two-year-olds that uh, I think will probably do fairly well when given the chance to stretch out. Bears Future covers the seven furlongs at Woodbine and 123.58. Speaking of two-year-olds stretching out, next up we'll head to Golden Gate Fields for two-year-olds going a mile and a sixteenth in the Angel Island. Akafella's the last one in. Bluegrass reward is all set. They're ready to go. Racing. King Cola off OK with El Gaucho. Kingsford Drive. Like a rack, the inside is close handy. Akafella coming down the extreme outside. Moment of weakness in between runners in the blue colours. Bluegrass reward out the back early. El Gaucho is the leader from stablemate Kingsford Drive, who's caught wide. Like a rack right on the back of the pace setter. Moment of weakness is with Like a rack in a joint second. Kingsford Drive out three wide, now back to fourth. Then comes Akafella, four and a half lengths off the early lead with King Cola to his inside, and Bluegrass Reward is four lengths last. Into the back stretch, and the Grey El Gaucho is clear by three from Lacarac and Moment of Weakness together, followed by Kingsford Drive, and then on the inside, fifth Akafella, about three lengths to King Cola, drifting back to a solo sixth. Ten off the lead at the half mile pole and four lengths clear of Bluegrass Reward. El Gaucho has strung them out in the middle stages of the race. Leads by two lengths to Luck Rack on the inside of Moment of Weakness. Kingsford Drive three wide every step of the way. Arkefella poised to his inside. He's right in behind those horses at the three-eighths pole. Needing somewhere to run as they swing around the far turn. Five sixteenths to go. El Gaucho by two and a quarter from Luckerack. Moment of weakness. He's in the clear on Akafella. And the favourites coming after them strongly. Further back in the field, Bluegrass Reward making up ground to fifth. King Cola sixth on the outside. But Akafella, the maiden, has gone past them like they're tied to the rail. Akafella, with an explosive turn of foot, has raced away by six lengths from King Cola. Bluegrass Reward, moment of weakness. They're left to battle for the miners. But Akafella, a dazzling display, has won in hand by half a dozen lengths from either Moment of Weakness or King Cola. Then comes Bluegrass Reward. Lacarac failed to stay. Then El Gaucho and Kingsford Drive. Akafella, another interesting two-year-old, getting a little bit more ground to work with and running quite well. He was second in his career debut at Del Mar in a maiden special. Not a bad effort at all that afternoon. And here on the stretch out looks very professional, making a sharp move into, the con into contention on the turn and drawing clear by six over Moment of Weakness, who was making his American debut. King Cola completes the order of the top three. The winner, Akafella, 
a dark bear brown son of Mr. Greeley from Special Ballad by St. Bellotto. Bred in Kentucky by Stone Street Thoroughbred Holdings and owned by Spendthrift Farm. Trained by Richard Mandela and ridden to victory by Russell Bays. Acafella covers the mile in a 16th at Golden Gate in 145.54. We will head to Southern California next and wrap up the Del Mar meet. We'll go back to last Wednesday in the Grade 1 Del Mar Futurity. It's like they're all set. And away they go. Knee center, JP's Gusto breaks fast, but on the far side, Comet to the top now goes up alongside. Comet to the top, JP's Gusto, the early leaders. Riveting Reason's been sent along from third. Alongside of that comes Western Mood, who's now four lengths off the leader. Extreme outside is Gosno Bob. Now here comes Just Imagine in the white cap, moving all the way up to fourth. Road Ready is in there as well, and then we drop back to Mackenzie's way down at the rail, being passed though by Indian Winter, is getting closer, six off the leaders. Then a big gap of five lengths further back to Jay Sito and Major Art. They are strung out over a lot of ground down the back stretch. It's Comet to the top on the outside of J.P.'s Gusto. They're in front by a length to Riveting Reason right there in third. Then back to Just Imagine in the fourth spot on the far side. Road Ready being sent after them. In behind that comes Indian Winter. Five off the leaders. At the rail, Mackenzie's way. He's got to pick it up. Far side, we have Western Mood. And now Jay Sito starting to get involved late. They're at the top of the lane now, and J.P.'s Gusto's got to try to find more. Holding on to the lead, Comet to the top's gone. Outside of that, riveting reason. Now they come from behind us. Here's Jay Sito, but J.P.'s Gusto's kicked well clear. And J.P.'s Gusto, another scintillating performance today. J.P.'s Gusto and Pat Valenzuela absolutely romp in the Del Mar for dirty. Jay Sito finished powerfully in second, then riveting reason, Indian winter and western mood. J.P.'s Gusto has now swept the uh, two-year-old program in Southern California, the Willard Proctor Memorial, the Hollywood Juvenile, the Best Pal, and now the Del Mar Futurity as well to run his record to four for five lifetime with a four and a half length, nearly entirely front-running performance and uh, a very sharp effort by this guy who uh, just looks to be a very, very strong California-based runner. Now, the question is whether or not he is going to stretch out. Uh, he does have a pedigree that would indicate that he is probably better, in, better kept going short. And in fact, Jay Sito, who ran a very big second from back off the pace after a slow start, might be one to keep your eye on, particularly going a little bit longer when they stretch to two turns, and also possibly when they, if uh, they give this guy a chance to try the grass. We had a dead heat in the third spot between Riveting Reason and Indian Winter. The winner, J.P.'s Gusto, is a two-year-old Bay Ridgling, a son of Successful Appeal, out of Call Her Magic by Caller ID. Bred in Kentucky by Windstar Farm and owned by Gem Stable, trained by David Hoffman's, ridden to victory by Pat Valenzuela. J.P.'s Gusto covers the 7 and 122.95. We will return home to New York now, head to Belmont for opening weekend stakes racing, and we'll start on Saturday with older horses going a mile and three-eighths on the grass in the Bowling Green. They're in the gate. And they're off. Strike a deal comes out first. Follow my footsteps going very, very wide. Follow my footsteps who is extremely lathered up is just absolutely separated from the rest of the field. Coming up in between horses, June Turk now to put a little pressure on strike a deal. Rajiv Mirage really trying to keep follow my footsteps a bit away from the rest now on the outside moving into the clubhouse turn. Then Samard moves fourth on the inside. Al Kali is fifth. Winchester drafting in behind horses. Winchester just following Al Kali in the early stages here. And two lengths back to the trailer, Dry Martini. So around the clubhouse turn. And it's strike a deal. Ramon Dominguez trying to nurse this front runner along. Was not nursed through the opening quarter. 23 seconds flat, very strong fraction. Although the half goes in 49 and one fifth seconds, that second quarter up in 26 and change. So down the back stretch run, strike a deal in June Turk, 1 2. Simard on the inside, third. And then it's follow my footsteps alongside Simard. 
followed by Al Kali, who's now on the inside of Winchester. Al Kali and Winchester, those two just four lengths from the leader. The trailer is Dry Martini. The leaders still strike a deal. Who runs a very sensible three quarter mark in 114 and four. The pace has been slow to develop as the field moves into the far turn. Strike a deal leads with a half mile to go here. June Turk continues on in second. Simard just in behind the lead right there, third. Follow my footsteps. Al Kali still has Winchester to his outside. Winchester effectively pinning Al Kali in behind horses for the time being. Dry Martini still the trailer, but it is wide open. Everyone's got a shot here with two furlongs remaining in the Bowling Green. Off the turn into the stretch. Strike a deal is still the leader. And June Turk and Winchester is cut loose. And here he comes. And Samard toward the inside. Al Kali totally stymied. Now he finds room on the outside. But it's still Strike a deal. Winchester coming with a determined run. Al Kali's got running room now. And Al Kali has got the win. Al Kali who did not get running room to the final 70 yards, gets up to win. Winchester and Simard. Al Kali finally picks up that elusive stakes win now at the age of four. He had been very good last year, including picking up stakes credentials there, but he had been a little bit short when coming in against older horses this year. He had won a nice allowance two races back in July, a good third in the sword dancer at a mile and a half last time out. The mile and three furlong seems to be right up his wheelhouse as he scores by a neck over Winchester, the odds on favorite in the field of seven, with Simard back in the third spot. Al Kali is a four-year-old Bay Ridgeling, a son of Medallia Doro from Maya by Capote, bred in Kentucky by Emery A. Hamilton and owned by Bros Stables and Wachtell Stable, trained by Bill Mott and ridden to victory by Alan Garcia. Al Kali covers the mile and three ace on the firm Belmont Turf in 215.23. We'll continue now with the weekend stakes racing action at Belmont on Sunday afternoon. Older horses state breads in the Ashley T. Cole on the grass. They're in the gate. And they're off. Spa City Fever racing to the lead. Studied momentarily from the gate. Piazza de Spena. There's riding on the wall. And riding on the wall. Aggressively taking that early lead here. Spa City Fever runs along second early on. Followed by Pocket Cowboys third. Then give me credit. A break of five. Back to Uncle T7. Then Solvent. And Piazza de Spena the trailer. Into the back straight here, Spa City Fever taking over. Riding on the wall, held the lead through the uh, opening quarter mile, coming back again after that lead. So they're really going at it head to head here after a 24 and 3 opening quarter mile. Now the leader, firmly established, Spa City Fever. Riding on the wall, second on the inside, but not far behind. Pocket Cowboys runs in third, giving credit fourth by three. Uncle T7, then a break of nine back to the two trailers, Solvent and Piazza de Spagna. Down the back stretch run, a half 49 seconds flat. They're now sharing the lead, Spa City Fever and Riding on the Wall. There's nothing between them as they approach the half mile pole. Sitting just in behind, Pocket Cowboys runs third, then give me credit. Uncle T7, well within striking range. And a break of another seven or eight back to the two trailers, Solvent and Piazza de Spagna around the far turn. Spa City Fever Riding on the Wall. Matching strides as they approach the top of the stretch. Targeted by Pocket Cowboys, who swings to the outside. Gimme Credit goes farther out into the course. And Uncle T7, five from the lead. The leaders are still riding on the wall. And Spa City Fever, there's nothing between them. And here comes Uncle T7. And here comes Gimme Credit. And here comes Pocket Cowboys. Uncle T7 up for the lead, coming down to the wire. And it will be... Uncle T7, patiently ridden by Julian Leperu, the winner by a length and three quarters. Pocket Cowboys was second. Give me credit was third. Piazza to spend. You got fourth. The weather problems that hit the Jersey Shore avoided Belmont Park for uh, at least the earlier part of the afternoon. They were able to run this race on a firm turf course, and Uncle T7 scores nicely, slipping in to win by a length and a half over Pocket Cowboys. 
who had run a couple of pretty nice races in recent days, or recent weeks rather. Gimme Credit completes the order of the top three as the favorite in the field. The winner, Uncle T7, a good second in the Kingston two races back. Last time out, they put him uh, on the main track at Saratoga in an overnight, and he was beaten by 10 lengths, finishing fourth by, behind Driven by Success. But that horse is a serious graded stakes type horse when going short on the main track. So Uncle T7 had obviously been in a pretty tough spot last time out when this race deci they decided to keep this race on the, uh, on the turf. Kind of held it together a little bit, uh, although obviously it, was, uh, it came up a little on the shy side as Banrock was uh, sidelined. It was announced earlier in the week, so he was not going to be there. And of course, Banrock had won this race several years in a row. The winner, Uncle T7, is a four-year-old bay son of Freud, a young stallion that's really had a breakout year this year in New York, out of Holy Wish by Lord at War. Bred in New York by Anthony Gray, owned by Thomas Mina, Suzanne Bobley, MFRG Racing Stable, and Dennis Bryda, trained by John Kimmel and ridden to victory by Julian Leperu. Uncle T7 covers the nine furlongs on the Belmont Turf in 149.88. That'll wrap up this edition of Horses and Courses. Thank you for joining us. We hope you've enjoyed the program and will be able to join us once again next week as we take a look at stakes racing action from around the country. Until then, I'm Jean Wood. Have a great week at the races.